There we go. Welcome to the stream. Uh, that was Beethoven, by the way. It wasn't Bach. Um, I mean, it's a bit more expressive, which is, I guess, not quite. Well, I, I guess Bach did write quite expressive pieces. But when I hear stuff like that, I usually think of Beethoven. It was his Opus 11, number one. And the reason why I'm playing this. No, no spooky pieces yet. We'll hear enough spooky music in a second. Uh, but the reason why I was playing this was because we will be playing a few spooky visual novel games that will um, have classical music in them. And this might be a bit educational, actually. I like uh, making my streams educational because of, you know, uh, because I'm studying musicology and I'm a big, uh, like, um, I guess, fan of uh, talking about music theory and stuff. Uh, but yeah, actually, I haven't played this piece in a year. Uh, I actually did play it uh, in my like during an entrance exam. Uh, I didn't too too. Uh, I didn't do too bad, so I guess that was good. Um, but yeah, I hope this. Wasn't too bad, even though I didn't. Uh, I haven't played it in a year. Okay, Patrick pranked me. He's Batman. Um. <laughs> the emote. Thank. Um. Let me actually. I'm going to play a few more. Um, classical pieces later on as a transition uh, to make this a bit more interesting. Let me actually look at my description. Oh yeah, the emote. <laughs> That's my favorite emote. It's in every description. It has to be. <clears throat> okay, um, let's switch to the screen. Actually, I might actually, yeah, I don't actually have to show the screen until later when I'm playing Usagi Syndrome. It's actually a good angle. Like you have my piano here, this makes it look like uh, like more musical. This is a musical stream now. Um, so as announced, we will be playing three games, uh, four games actually later on, but three of those are Spooktober entries. One of them is a game by Alfred Pros, which got a huge update. Um, but yeah, this Alfred's game will be at the end. But right now we will be playing um, Spooktober visual novel thingies. Um, here we go. <laughs> Ignore that. Uh, I just thought like uh, there's like a huge like reference here. It feels like this is a reference to Deltarune. But yeah, um, anyhow. Um, we will be playing Diablos and Musica first. Actually, is that, oh no. Actually, it makes more sense to play piece by piece first, since, um, wait, who, okay, I'm confused. Yeah, piece by piece is Kurama's piece. Was Kokoro Han? Uh. So the thing is, I want to play a game of a dev that's currently in stream. Um, <laughs> sorry about the tabs. I actually have a thing with way more tabs. I have like 30 tabs open on this browser. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Um. Ah. Okay, this one. Okay. Wait. Ah. I'm uh, mixing up names because your names are too similar. Let me actually look at the, my announcement. Yeah, Amazing Flow was Diablos and Musica. Kokoro Hane was uh, piece by piece. Uh, Kokoro Hane and of course more people. And SAD was by Kurama. There we go. Okay, I got it. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm really bad with names. Um, so I guess in that case, we will be playing uh, piece by piece first. While um, the dev is here. Uh, I have it downloaded, so we don't really have to wait. You can see my downloads. Um, oops, piece by piece. Uh, I will be talking about a few more things after... Actually, 
this is maybe a good opportunity to talk about that thing because um, the thing being legalities of using classical music in games. As far as I know, both Diablos and Musica and Piece by Piece use classical music. Um, and I don't know how, uh, like, <laughs> 3 a.m., oh god. Um, I don't exactly know how they went about it. I know that um, for Diablos in Musica, the dev uh, looked for um, there we go. Uh, looked for Creative Commons stuff. <laughs> okay, this is really bad. Okay, let me talk first, and then I will adjust this stuff. Um, yeah, okay, no cries here. Um, but the thing is, um, in case you're curious, like I have no idea uh, how particular they were about it, the devs of Piece by Piece, and if uh, the devs of Diablos and Musica like made extra totally sure that the pieces they downloaded were actually like royalty free, uh, as the sites they have downloaded it from were uh, advertised um, The thing is that like if you want to use classical music, uh, then you might know the rule that you are allowed to use pieces by musicians that are like after a certain amount of time after their death. Um, like it can be 50 years, 70 years, 120 years, depending on your country. Um, but one thing that people overlook, like they think, oh, okay, I can now use class this like classical piece by Bach. I can just download it off YouTube. That will have no copyright problems. But uh, that's not the case because the recordings himself, themselves might be copyrighted. Um, the thing is that if you play those pieces yourself, then you shouldn't have any problems uh, using it for your project. Um, unless, you know, the automated YouTube system screws up, which it usually does, uh, and flags your uh, performance. Um, so the stream very likely will get copyright stricken stricken, striked. Um, but if you want to be on the legal safe side, you have to own the recordings as well. Just as a PSA for people who want to make have like classical music in their game and stuff. Like I said, I have no idea how particular these two devs were about that. And I mean, even if they didn't really pay too much attention to that, like I said, the Diablos and Musica dev did uh, tweet that they did make sh tried to make sure uh, that it's all good legally. Um, but it's not like anyone will come after uh, random like games, uh, game jam games. I guess that's the second aspect of legality. The first is, is it legal or not? And the second is, will you get caught or not? Okay, that's good. Uh, the unfortunate thing about uh, YouTube is uh, that it will be claimed no matter whether it's legal or not because classical pieces sound too similar. Um, no, I don't play Team Fortress 2 music. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, uh, the devs did say that the extras don't work. Uh, let me actually show you the page first. So here's the page with a few like things. Um, oh, there's actually Koko Rahane in person. Yeah, I unfortunately don't play Team Fortress 2, so I don't really know anything about the music. Um, I believe they, yeah, they are like uh, musicians themselves. This one is a piano major. This one loves like rock music. And this one is a violent prodigy, so looking forward to that. Let's get into it. So, by the way, while I am studying musicology, my repertoire knowledge isn't that great. So while I might know what this piece is, uh, I might know that or like might think that this piece sounds familiar, I have no idea what it is, but 
maybe go Korahan can help out. This one's actually pretty cool. I have to turn up the volume a bit. Um, Shelly, stay put at home while you go to work, alright? But, but I don't want to be alone. Shelly's scared. You're a big girl now, Shelly, and big girls don't get scared. We'll be home before you know it. Goodbye, sweetie. Rip, there they go. There they go. Actually, I think part of the screen is cut off right now. Sorry about this whole readjustment stuff. Yeah, you can't actually see the text. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I guess. Okay. Shelly, I'm sorry. My business partner is here and we're going to be very busy with work stuff. But look, new friends. friends? Uh-huh. You see, my business partner has children too. They're twins, Raphael and Edward. Why don't you all play together for a while? Oh, um, I... Uh... All right, have fun, you three. Mm. Friends to play with. It was a foreign concept. Shelley didn't know how to react. As the two boys approached her, she clutched Mr. Bunny tight, tightly to her chest, her eyes shifting off to the side. Hi there. Hi. Hey, you okay? You're so quiet. Hello. Dang, I love the like slight reverb on the uh, voice acting. Edward waves his hand in front of Shelley's face. Ed, stop that. It's rude. Sorry. Don't mind him. He means no harm. I'm Raphael, and this is my younger brother, Edward. Only by five minutes. Rolling his eyes, Raphael simply ignored him and continued. What's your name? I'm, I'm Shelley, and this is... Oh yeah, like, I have to admit, I do. <laughs> like voice over editing, but it's definitely the most like gruesome job there is uh, per for me personally. But, oh well, <laughs> it's a thing. Can be fun, definitely. Especially if you can like uh, work with effects like these. She held up her stuffed toy, her one and only friend. This is Mr. Bunny. Mr. Bunny, huh? Rafa smiled, taking its paw and giving it a gentle shake as if greeting it. <laughs> what? You're talking to a stuffed animal. <laughs> Ed, stop being. Huh? <laughs> Did I do something funny? Uh, I just didn't expect that. I guess it was kind of funny. Thank you for acknowledging my friends. Hey, now with us around, you get to have real friends. He took her hand and pulled her from her chair. <laughs> Edward grinned proudly, pointing to himself. Come on, let's play. Yeah, let's play. The doll fell from a grip, landing onto the floor. That was the day everything changed. A day when Shelley changed from a lonely girl without a place to belong to an adventurous girl. Uh, owning it to the two twins. Owing it to the two twins. But that wouldn't remain the only significant day that changed her life forever. Oh dang, realistic back. Huh? <laughs> realistic oh, bad. Was it's been ten years since I met the twins, hasn't it? As a kid, I didn't have many friends. I frequently changed schools because my parents' jobs and making permanent friends was difficult. I love that there's like a cleft here, 
musical class. I'm glad I got to meet those two, though. They were my first real friends. I wonder how Ed and Raph are doing now. I heard they studied abroad. Shelly stretched her arm into the air, yawning loudly. <sighs> well, no use of thinking about them now. I better get ready quickly. I wouldn't want to miss class. Good morning, Mom, Dad. Good morning, Shelly. Sit here. We have French toast for breakfast today. Mm, French toast? That's my favorite! Shelly realized that her father was wearing a formal suit, busy fixing a tie on his neck. Dear, let me help out. What's the occasion, Dad? Are you having a meeting today? I have a very important transaction today. It won't be returning until late at night. Oh, I see. How are you coping with the new house? Technically, it's not new. We lived here, uh, we've lived here 10 years ago before we leased it and moved out. Do you remember that, uh, Shelly? Mm-hmm. Now we're back. Because of, what was it again? The lease is over after 10 years? No, because the lessee, <laughs> lease, leasey, you have to admit, I haven't heard that word before. Um, less Lisi, Lassie, run away, haha. <laughs> Shay's mother elbowed him. Dear, don't spot nonsense. I was just joking, yes, the contract is over and now since no one is interested in renting it, we'll just live here for the time being. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wonder how Raph and Ed are doing though. Clang. Father's spoon slipped from his grasp. Dad, are you okay? Ah, sorry. So me. Uh, you know, I'm actually meeting their father today for a trans uh, transaction. Really? Wait, uh, yes. So is Raph and Ed with him? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, it was silly to get my hopes up. We're adults now. They probably have their own lives. I doubt the twins would stick around with their father doing something as boring as a transaction. After eating a hearty, hearty breakfast, Shelly placed her dish in the sink, then slung her back on her shoulder. Well, Luck on your transaction, Dad. Will do. Take care, honey. There we go. Phew, made it in time. I better go to the lecture hall. The professor's going to kill me if I'm a minute late. Shelley entered the building. It was a prestigious university famous for its courses in music. She was a first-year piano major. Her parents have always wanted her to choose a different career path, perhaps something more lucrative, such as medicine or business. Such is the life of a musician. The left part of the screen. What do you mean? Oh, I think, was it cut off or something? Yeah, it's because of me. Sorry about that. And the box is too big. Um, stream quality. I am a professional streamer. I swear. Um, can I like resize this window? That would make it easier for me. Yeah, I can. Oh no. Yes. Yeah, I guess I can. But I will now have to probably fix it up in Streamlabs as well. Yep. And there we go. Okay. Should be all good now. I hope. Yeah. As a child, her parents' continuous absence allowed her to spend more time listening to various pieces composed by many renowned composers. She had so many favorite pieces, it was hard to pinpoint just one, though there was no denying she had quite an affinity to waltzes. Waltzes. Music was the only thing that made her loneliness a bit more bearable. Oh, it's finally over. Music theory is so boring. How dare you? I wish we could just play the piano peacefully without adding any mumbo jumbo. Hmm, I guess I'll practice a bit before going home.
should I walk to the practice room, peering into each of the frosted pa panes to see if the room was occupied? Oh. It's just one note. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. It's like for a sec. Wait, it's just it's just a note. It sounds familiar. Where have I heard it before? She realized that the music came from a room at the far end of the corridor. The music grew louder as she walked closer to the room, and the wave of nostalgia tingled her senses. I remember now. It's box air on G string. It sure brings back memories. I wonder who's playing it though. Hmm, maybe I can go and have a little peek. Shelly stood at her tiptoes as she peered into the into the set room. A tall boy with raven black hair was playing the violin. His eyes were closed, his bow strokes natural and seemingly effortless, flowing freely. Hi Kevin, what's up? It was as if he had practiced the piece a thousand times. Oh. Way. I thought it should sound hopeful and perhaps a bit romantic, but he makes it sound so melancholic. Playing some spooky music visual novels. Jay continued staring at the boy. He seemed to be engrossed in the music, lost in his own trance. Fun facts, and she said like he probably practiced it like a thousand times. Uh, like, at least that's what I heard from a friend of mine who studied like uh, an instrument. Uh, the French horn. They are kind of supposed to play the instrument for at least four hours a day. It's like, bruh, a side of classes, like proper like playing scales up and down and stuff like that. Hey, Buttercup, what's up? Why does he look so? It's really brutal. Like I'm glad that I didn't study an instrument, but musicology. I think that's more fun for me personally. Apparently the door wasn't closed properly, and it caved in all of a sudden. Shay fell face flat on, <laughs> on the floor. Dang, the music stopped abruptly. She looked up to see a pair of cold emerald eyes glaring back at her. S sorry, I, I didn't mean to- I, I mean, yes, I did mean to eavesdrop, but wait, no, I meant- your performance was excellent. I couldn't help but be drawn into it. The boy's eyes widened a bit as he saw her face. Your... He paused, mumbling something to himself until he came to a conclusion. Could it be Shelly? Huh? huh? How did you... The stranger lowered his violin. I never expected you to be here. Do you remember me? I'm... Shay's phone suddenly rang. Oh crap, it's my mother! I forgot it's my turn to buy groceries! Shay jumped up and quickly ran out of the room. Mom's gonna kill me! Uh. Rip. The boy now stood all, all by himself. He took up his violin and bow before sigh sighing loudly. But is it really okay for me to meet her again? What happened? The plot thickens. It was this piece. That guy was playing this piece before. I actually love this. Like this parallel. Like you have it on a solo violin played by uh, that one person. Then you have it merged here on the piano on her instrument. It's actually no really it cool. Familiar. This is one of my favorite pieces when I was a kid. It sure brings back memories. Who was that guy though? He seems to know me. Maybe he's one of my classmates? Shall you shook away all thoughts and focus on playing the piano? Next time I see him, I'll make sure to ask his name. Suddenly, Shelly heard the sound of the front door swing huh? open. I wonder who that could be. Is Dad back? Shay stood up from the piano bench and went to see who had arrived. He should be home in a few minutes. Why don't you sit down? All right. Ah, oh, it's Dad's business partner. Wait. Wasn't he also Ed and Raph's father? I definitely recognize him. Huh? There was someone else with him, a boy in a long-sleeved green shirt, eyeing everything around him with a look of nostalgia. Wait a minute, isn't he? Oh, dang. Wait, what's he doing here? Whereas Shelly was internally panicking, the boy's gaze fell upon her. So it was you. Uh, what? 
it. You remember, right? Remember? Can it be? Raph? He nodded. A sudden feeling of excitement bubbled up inside her stomach. Oh my gosh, Raph, I missed you so much! What are you doing here? Ed's here too, right? Mm. Well... It's in 3x4, right? <laughs> Is that the waltz as well? I mean, not every piece in 3x4 uh, time has to be a waltz, <laughs> but I don't know. Just made me think of that. Suddenly, Shelly, uh, Shelly's vision went completely black. She realized that a pair of hands had covered her eyes. Guess who? <gasps> Shelly gasped. Ed! You betcha! You didn't think I'd allow Raph to come here all by himself without me, did ya? <laughs> Jane noticed Raphael didn't look too happy. Raph, what's wrong? <laughs> Raph thinks he's too good to talk to me. That's not it! Oh no, did something happen between you two? She momentarily looked at each of them. Well, whatever it is, you better set those differences aside when you're with me. Let's go back to how it used to be. Things can't always go back to the way they used to be. And why Ominous. not? Yeah, why not? Because! Raf seethed, it, holding himself back and looking off to the side. I'm not feeling too good. I better sit down. Raf walked away into the living room, leaving Ed and Shelly alone. He, he looks so pale. Shay felt like her heart just broke. The twins used to be so close. What could have happened to cause such a rift between them? Well, never mind that, Grouch. This house sure brings back memories. Wow, you still remember? Of course. It's funny how fate works. To think that we're here in the same house again. After ten years! Yeah, I barely recognized you! But Dragus, no. <laughs> Please. Well, I recognize you. After all, even after 10 years, her fashion sense is still the worst. What though? She has a music clef. I mean, look at that shirt. It looks like you're still wearing pajamas. <laughs> what? How dare you? This is my favorite shirt. Yeah, how dare you? And bold of you to say that when you can't even wear a jacket properly. What do you mean? This is fashion, I tell you. Fashion! I have the coolest sense of fashion in the whole wide world! <laughs> cool sense of fashion, my ass. Rafa reappeared, seeming to have recovered from his previous bouts of sickness. Why do you have to look all flashy? What's up with the edges of your hair? It's blood. <laughs> the fact? <sighs> have you always been so morbid? Leave his hair alone. I think it's cool. <laughs> Did you take a joke? No. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you had me worried for a second. Worried? About what? About us, dummy! It's been ten years since we met, and the first thing Shell sees is her two friends bickering with each other. I know you're a machine. At least show some sympathy for her poor heart, yeah? Sorry. <laughs> now that's more like it. Hey, oh no. I just got an idea. Something you bad is going it. to happen. I am I'm feeling something bad coming up. He paused to build up anticipation. Let's explore! Where did he get like this party uh, thingy from? Ed, we're not kids anymore. Are you kidding me? I'll always be a kid at heart. <laughs> Let's go, Shell! Edward grabbed Shelly's hand and yanked her away. Hey, don't kidnap me! <laughs> Good one! Is he gonna kidnap her for real or something? <laughs> These two... really... And before Edward is like a kidnapper. Oh yes! This place brings back memories! Do you remember how we used to play hide-and-seek here? Ed always hides in the same spot. It's too easy to find him. I know, right? He always hides under the sofa. I can't believe you still remember that, Raph. 
it is a horror game, so I'm not 100% sure if it's family friendly. There was actually another game that I maybe want to play called Monster that was uh, submitted, but yeah. I mean, that one was uh, definitely way more gory, so if you want gore, <laughs> you can check out Monster in the Spooktober game jam. Remember how we used to jump and dance on the sofa? Yeah, and we vomited right after! <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we created such a scene. Oh boy. Mom gave me a good scolding because of that. We told the two to stop, but none of you listened. Wow, your bedroom really didn't change. It's just how I remembered it. Well, wait, what are you two doing in my... Ed, it's rude to... Knowing their protest, Ed casually waltz into the room and started looking around. Hey, Shell. You still have your assortment of Barbie dolls? Coco is like the devil in person. Trying to pull us in with like nice uh, friendliness and then hits us with everything like bad. I'm expecting it. My what? You know, those dolls you always played with. I remember you being picky about the clothes they wear. Which is ironic, because you don't even care about your own clothes. I'll leave her clothes alone. Quite you. <laughs> I like the church. You could have at least made them a bit more dolled up. Ed, were you always this overbearing? This pun. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Hit me with that pun. Like that. <laughs> like you should talk. You forced us to play with those dolls. And house too. We were playing with Shelly. It was only fair for us to play what she wanted once in a while. And now, it all makes sense why you were always the mom when we played house. Excuse me? Hey, is that Mr. Bunny? Huh? Oh, yup, that's Mr. Bunny, all right. Oh, it's the bunny. It's cursed. Out of a grub the stuffed rabbit from Shirley's bed. Man, can't believe you still have him. And in such prime condition, too. That's because she actually took care of her toys. Unlike a certain someone. Edward tossed the, uh, rough. Edward tossed the ball. ball. Back to Shelly's bed and started moving to her wardrobe. <laughs> what? Ooh, I wonder what's inside. H hey, no touching my things! Eh? But, but it's exploration time. No exploration in my room! Get out, all of you, out! Dang. Oh, what's up with this? <laughs> Damn. <coughs> yeah. Rafael released a muffled sigh, covering his mouth and nose with his hand. That's why we shouldn't be up here. I like how it's actually muffled. But Perfect. No. Of course you just had to ignore me. Man, that couch sure has seen better days. I know that piece <laughs> because of um like it's used in some uh advertisement. Ah, that's Chopin, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the style is definitely Chopin, but I believe I have at least tried to play it. It must have been, it must be a, some kind of nocturne. I'm not sure which nocturne it is, but I guess if you <laughs> want to find this piece, but you can ask a Kolohane or I guess Google for Chopin nocturnes. But I think this is one of my favorite nocturnes of his. Is it the one we vomited on? <clears throat> oh God, no. The vomit couch. The two of them laughed, but Raphael didn't find it very amusing. Hey, you think the candy we stuck between the cushions are still there? Ooh, let's find out! Oh no. What did they do? Edward and Shelley dived excitedly towards the couch. Raphael felt like he was witnessing a nightmare. Seriously? You're going to try to find some old candy that... Ooh, credits list. Uh, never mind. 
Raph's just jealous, because we don't plan to share any of our findings. Oh my god, Ed, you don't plan on eating it, do you? <laughs> Eat it. Come on. I'm not that stupid. No, don't be a chicken. Eat yeah, it. Yeah, give him more credit. Raph is sighed heavily, messaging, uh, messaging, messaging his temples. The two continued their little treasure hunt, leaving no cushion unturned until... Shelly felt something stuffed behind a pillow. This? Oh, spooky. Tape recorder? A spooky tape recorder. Edward hovered over Shelly's shoulder, staring, staring in awe. Whoa. Talk about nostalgia. Is this mine? Yeah. You used to listen to these classical mixtapes or whatever on it all the time. <laughs> Fire classical mixtapes. Huh. Yeah, now that you mention it... I do remember. I wonder if they're still around here somewhere. Hey, maybe they're around somewhere. That was odd. Okay. Stop. Just stop it. The two suddenly turned their attention towards Raphael. He let out a long sigh and shook his head, his face turning pale. Raph, are you alright? Let's just leave. Those tapes are probably long gone anyway. You're not fun. Ooh. That's nice. Including like uh real life experience into this. I really like this kind of stuff. Heather jumped off the torn sofa, grumbling as he followed behind his older twin. Shelley looked at the old recorder she held in her hand. Old tapes. Hmm. Spooky old tapes. They've probably like ghost voices in them, like, uh, what was it called? Um, something Zero. That one, like, Japanese PS2 horror game. Project Zero. There we go. So remember the tape part. It was probably the spookiest part of the whole game. But yeah. Can recommend to play Project Zero. Shelly fell face down onto her bed that night. <sighs> what a day! didn't see Ed leave with Raph and their father. He really seemed pissed Raph cut our adventure so short. Oh well. We'll be having lots of adventures again soon. I wonder why they came back though. I thought they were studying abroad. Perhaps it's because of their father's business? <sighs> no use of thinking of it now. I can just ask Raph tomorrow. After all, we're studying the same university, right? She closed her eyes, feeling happier than she's felt in a long time. Surely tomorrow will be... I can't. I can't make a high voice. <laughs> I can't voice like in general. Surely tomorrow will be just as exciting. There we go. Hmm. I look for Rap everywhere, but he doesn't seem to be in any practice room. I wonder where he is. Rip. Rip voice line. <laughs> she turned around the corner, surely noticed a commotion in front of the ho one of the halls. Actually, um, I do have something for this. I'm not sure how good it is going to sound, because I never tried it myself. Uh, where is it? I actually don't have it loaded up. I have a pitch shifter thing. Uh, I hope it doesn't break my thing here. Let's see. Pitch shifter. No, that's the wrong one. Ah, well, you can't find the pitch, uh, pitch shifter anymore. Maybe next time. Don't worry, I do have um, other stuff loaded in though. As she turned around the corner, Shelly noticed a commotion in front of one of the halls. What's going on there? Wow, did you hear his performance? His vibratos were amazing. <laughs> Who says that? I mean, I could actually imagine myself uh, saying something like this, <laughs> but... 
I don't know, out of context, it's like so weird. Like his vibratos were amazing. I still love this. <laughs> I don't know why. It's great. I know, right? And his bowing techniques. Okay, now <laughs> this I could maybe understand more. I mean, I wouldn't like comment on someone's bowing techniques because I have no idea of bowing techniques. But you know the vibrato thing? Oh well. <laughs> but did you notice when he plays? He never puts any emotion in it. Ooh. Ah, yeah, that's true. I've never seen, seen him smile either. But Raphael guy sure impressed the professors. No wonder he's called a violin prodigy. Huh? Violin prodigy? How come I've never heard of it? But is he really as emotionless as they say? I saw him playing the other day. He looked anything but emotionless. The house doors opened suddenly and out came Raphael. Raph! Shelly? Uh, who's that girl? Does she know him? It's that weirdo from the piano division. The one who comes to class wearing pajamas. Hey, I can oh, hear you, you know! Uh, come on. Let's just talk in another place. Raphael walked away from the crowd of students with Shelly tra trailing behind him. She tried to ignore the murmurs escaping from the students. I can't believe it. Raph has made a mark in the music industry while I'm just... What the heck? I got a donation? How did this happen? It's like the first, no, second time in my life I've ever gotten a donation. Thanks a lot. Dang. Okay. Didn't expect that. Um, donation. No, wait. Donation. Okay. <clears throat> Didn't actually play any not uh, notification, did it? Oh, there it is. There's notification. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, Gymnopedie. Shall we? By Eric Satie. This one's nice. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just wondering why you came here. I thought you studied abroad. My father had some business to do here for a few months. And the university I enrolled in had an exchange program with this one. Hence, why I'm here. That means you're returning once the program is over? I guess so. Shay's heart dropped. Don't look so sad all of a sudden. There's still some time before I leave, and besides, it's not like we're not going to see each other again. Shay's face brightened. <laughs> you're right, Raph. You sure have a funny way of cheering people up. I wasn't... And what about Ed? Is he having an exchange program here too? Raphael scratched his head in what seemed like annoyance. Don't know. Don't care. What? What kind of an answer is that? Look, I don't know what happened to you two these past ten years, but both of you need to man up. If there's a problem, then you should solve it quickly. Not everything is a puzzle, Shelley. Tell me, what's up with you two? Raphael must massage his temples, sighing loudly. It's complicated. You should have like a sighing counter up, like how often Raphael has sighed by now. Tell me! Must be at least like five times. I can't! <sighs> and I won't. Seriously? I've never heard of twins not getting along before. But Raphael simply ignored Shirley's remark. He walked to the sunlight streamed willow sill and absent mindedly took up his violin. He started playing a tune, the same tune Shelley heard when she first reunited with him. Shelley watched as Raphael closed his eyes, his bow gliding in the violin's strings seamlessly, emanating bitter notes. And they said he never plays with emotions. Either they have bad eyesight, or he only lets his emotions pour out in his peace. Wait! Stop! Stop! Raphael stopped playing and glanced at her. Sorry. I must have done it again. I play this piece every time I feel anxious. Bach? But why? What's so special about it? Uh, so you don't remember, huh? H huh? The memories. Never mind that. Raphael lowered his violin. Wait! I can play that piece too! On the piano! Why don't we play it together? Like how we always used to back then. 
Very well, then. Oh. A duet? Dad? This piece is supposed to be a tad bit hopeful, at the very least. But why do you make it sound so bitter? Does it have something to do with your relationship with Ed? Or perhaps with all the burdens you carry from being called a violin prodigy? I really love how they're like separate at first, like just the violin when he plays it. And then at that one point, just Shelly playing the piano. Now they're coming together. I love that kind of stuff. Shelly felt her fingers getting heavier and heavier with every key she pressed. Stop. It's as if you're <clears> drifting <throat> far, far away. But at the same time, this reminds me of the days we spent together. You, me, and Ed. We were inseparable, weren't we? I wish that these moments, wait, I wish that these moments will never end. There we go. Lectures were finally finished for the day and just as Shelley excited, exited the building, she spotted Raphael standing in front of the gates. It seemed like he was waiting for her. You're going home? Yeah! Do you mind if I come with you? Sure, Deco is you don't even need to ask. Deco is the MVP. You'll be staying over a bit, right? I can prepare some snacks. Uh, sure, I guess. Shadi smiled brightly. She was so elated. It had been such a long time since she felt this way. Yay! Oh, as they approached Shelly's house, they saw a familiar blonde figure with a loose jacket leaning against the front door. What took you guys so long? Ed! Shelly ran at full force, <laughs> glumping him. <laughs> nice to see you, too. He pushed her off, inhaling a sharp breath. Since when did you become so strong? Strong? No way! You just got weak! As the two continued in a mock banter, Raphael stood a few feet away, saying nothing. Huh? Raph, what's wrong? Get over here, you dork! You know what? I have some things to do. For Raphael could turn away and could turn and walk away, Shelly grabbed his wrist. No, you stay here. You promised to stay and have some snacks with me. Yes, you, not him. Damn, that's cold, bro. Bruh. Don't you dare call me that. Momentary silence swept over the scene. Shelly couldn't believe what she was seeing. Her cheeks puffed up in a pout and she gave Ruff's wrist a tighter squeeze. Stop being so stubborn! You... Stay! Come on, please. At least do this for me. Uh, I... Raphael couldn't bear to see Shelly so distraught. He released a heavy sigh. Fine, but only for a snack. Shay jumped up, pumping her fists in victory. Oh, you know you'll be staying for much longer than that. We're not going to let you leave. Damn it. What have I gotten myself into? Oh, boy. The plot thickens. Is it soon time for the big release? Snack time! Shay set down a plate of cookies and a glass of milk for each of them. Don't you have anything... Healthier? Oof. Hey, I made these, you eat these. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's quite the statement. I love it. Yeah, love a little. I want to keep living. That's the point. Cookies won't kill you, Raph. Raph sight. Perhaps he was being a little overbearing. I guess they do smell pretty good. He took one cookie off the plate and took a bite. See? Good, huh? He wasn't denying it. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we play hide and seek? Woo, I love that game. Ed, are you five years old? You're just jealous because I'm the fun one. Right, Shell? 
Oh, I'm not getting involved in that argument. Edward leaned forward, whispering to Shelley's ear. Because you know it's me, right? <laughs> what does that mean? Fine, I'll play too. Ah, Just okay. Don't hide in a wardrobe and get sucked into another dimension. I was confused for a second. Okay. Is that a Narnia reference? All right, you're it. What? Edward already sped off to hide somewhere. Oh, crap! And Shelly too. Why am I always it? Just have to look under the sofa. Easy peasy. Raphael began, began counting. As the numbers echoed throughout the house, Shay was at a loss where to hide. She stood in the living room, desperately spinning around to figure out where the perfect hiding spot would 14, be. 15, oh, dang. 16. Wait, I should probably do like a safety save. 17. <clears throat> oh no! 18. 19. There! Without any time left, Charlie dove behind the sofa under the windowsill. 20. Ready or not, here I come. She was down on all fours, peeking underneath the sofa, which allowed her to see if anyone was passing by. She could hear Raph's footsteps, but he hadn't yet thought of going into the living room. <laughs> what? In my right ear. Where did he go? Is he hiding nearby? He's hiding inside my right ear. Shay looked around until she noticed something underneath the piece of furniture in front of her. Huh? Shay cautiously crawled forward, knowing that she still would have a lot of cover from her sofa. What is this? It looked like a trap door. Shay tried to open it, but it was locked. Wait. This looks. It was a padlock that required a combination to open it. She reached out her hand when. Shelly, wait! Found you. Trey looked up. Damn it. You could hide better than that. Shay turned around to see Edward standing behind her. Uh, you gave me away. I did not. I just wanted to see where you were. No use arguing. He was probably just trying to warn her of Raphael's approach, but sometimes he could be too loud for his own good. By the way, what were you looking at? Edward is a fake. I'm calling it. This Edward is fake. The real one is under the uh, cellar. Huh? Oh. Or in that like secret hatch. There seems to be a trap door under here. A trap door? Uh. Whoa, cool. Uh, not cool. Yes, cool. Unfortunately, it's locked. It is? I don't remember it being locked. Wait, you remember this trap door? Well, yeah. We found it on one of our adventures, remember? Hmm. I wonder why it's locked then. We should try opening it. There's a dead body inside. Doors are it. locked for a good reason, Ed. Just leave it alone. That's no fun. Secrets are meant to be uncovered. And besides, isn't that your padlock, Shell? Ooh, the plot what? thickens. Shall you pulled at the chain lock, uh, looked closer at the padlock? Oh! I remembered I made a puzzle for this combination. Ooh, but puzzle. Where did I... Shelly. Uh, the classical music tape. A puzzle? In a tape? I liked to hide puzzles when I was a kid. I remember hiding the combination to my bicycle's padlock in a tape recording featuring classical music. We should find that tape. Then we can uncover the secrets of the trap door. Yeah! Ooh. I can't wait to go down there. How could you want to go back there, Ed? I told you. Doors are locked for a reason. Or oh, Rafa is the fake. They should stay locked! Uh, there's gotta be like a dead body down there. Raph. I... I've been here too long. I have stuff I need to do. Raph, wait! For another word, the front door shut and Rafa was gone. Happened. Raph has uh, always been a little paranoid. It's probably not as dangerous as he thinks. Anyway, you should really find that tape. We can solve the puzzle together. Yeah, let's solve it together. Provided the tape wasn't thrown out. It was evening now. Darkness has enveloped the starless sky. 
Ed had left a couple hours prior. He tried helping her find the missing tape, but to no avail. You can keep searching without me. That's what he said before he left. Aww, I'm starting to think this is hopeless. That tape is ten years old, and we just moved back into this house. There's no way it could have survived. Mom? Shay saw her mom in the dining room, holding a huge box of junk. Oh, hi, sweetie. I was just doing a little spring cleaning. What is all this stuff? Just what it looks like. Junk. None of it worth keeping. Oh, shoot. Mark accidentally dropped the box, its contents now strewn, strewn across the floor. Here, I'll help you clean up. Shelly dropped to her knees, gathering the uh, various pieces of junk. Huh? It was a cassette tape among them. This... She turned it over to analyze the track list. <gasps> Mom, can I keep this? Uh, sure. It's my tape. I've been looking all over through this. Yeah, of course, honey. If it's Thanks, yours. Mom. Shay jumped up from the floor, taking off to her bedroom. Here we go. You're going to fight the dead body. <gasps> I found it. I really found it. <laughs> Shay fell onto her back on her bed uh, in a fit of laughter, laughter, uh, hugging the cassette close to her chest. Now Ed and I can <clears throat> solve this mystery. Oh boy. Puzzle time. Okay, I think that's enough practice for today. Was it four hours though? <laughs> Gotta be four hours a day, at the very least. <clears throat> um, Shay rose from his seat and stretched, thinking about the padlock and the puzzle she found on the cassette. I wonder if the twins are coming today. And I doubt they will. After all, Dad doesn't have a meeting with their father today. Oh, okay. I'm gonna save. In fact, neither... Uh, of her parents were home at the moment, so if their dad did drop by, he'd just be wasting his time anyway. Huh? Who's that? Come in! Ooh, it's the sad. Shay went to the drawer and opened it. Howdy. I knew it. <laughs> I trained you well, cowgirl. But what brings you here huh. from the wild, wild west? I mean, I thought your father isn't coming today. No, please. No role playing allowed. I just came to visit, and I have an inkling that you were expecting me. Or was I wrong? Nope, you're spot on! Guess what? I found the old cassette! Ooh, that's great news! Now we can solve the puzzle and open the padlock! Yeah! Nice. Where's Ralph, by the way? Oh, that guy had some violin rehearsals or something. He's dead. Ah, I see. Anyway, your piano skills have tremendously improved, Shell. I heard you playing earlier. Tchaikovsky's Waltz Opus 40, number two. Nice. I'm actually currently researching Russian composers, so one day I'll get to Tchaikovsky. I'm not quite there yet, but... I just love waltzes. They make me want to dance all day. Then I hope you don't mind me waltzing into your house tonight. <sighs> Edward, please. Of course not. Waltz right oh, no. in. No, stop. Please stop. This hurts me physically. In a good way. Sure enough, Edward didn't hesitate to enter the house. He even rolled around the carpet like a child. <laughs> Ed, I don't mean to sound like rap or anything, but sometimes I wonder if you're just a kid in the skin of a 20-year-old. <laughs> what do you mean? Anyway, would you like some cookies? Something warm, perhaps? Edward suddenly set up, stopping his roll. Nah, I'm good. I'm more interested in the puzzle. Oh, same. He crawled behind the sofa under the windowsill and tucked the padlock chain. How about we solve this mystery thing. first? Time to save. <clears throat> all right, all right. Jeez, you're so adventurous. Shay pulled out the tape recorder and handed it to Edward. But the letter simply started at it and finally handed it back to the owner. I think you <clears> should <throat> solve it. After all, it's your puzzle. All right, then. Shay opened the cassette's uh, cover and started solving the puzzle for the four-digit combination. Okay, here we go. Hey, that's a 
one of the pieces that's also used in Eve, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, that's the puzzle. I can ask for a hint. Uh, can't click around here. I can't click on this. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, numbers. Um, Mozart, Chopin, Bach, Shostakovich, Beethoven, Haydn, Tchaikovsky, Mussorgsky, Bach, Saiti, Chopin again. Okay, we have two Chopins. Two Russian composers, two Bachs. Let's see. C A G G G E. Waltz number two. I mean, she's a fan of waltzes. I think that might be it. Maybe there's one waltz. Waltz in A minor. Waltz number two. Gallant waltz. That's just three waltzes. Right? Hmm. I believe a Sarah Bond is also some kind of dance, but I'm not totally sure. Or promenade, maybe? <clears throat> Maybe it's like her favorite pieces from the past, so it would be the waltz in A minor, waltz number two, Garland waltz, because those are all like waltzes. And then you have air on G string, because it was also one of her, her like favorite pieces. Mysterious. Yeah, that's just right. Uh, what's an A minor? What's number four? Gallant Waltz and Air on G string. From today onwards, I shall be known as the Puzzle Master. The padlock let out a satisfying click before finally opening. <clears throat> Let me readjust my mic. <clears throat> Whoa, you did it! First try. Easy. <laughs> I did it! Edward Ruffled Shelley's hair. Great job, Shelley. I knew you could do it. Yeah! Now let's go! Oh boy, it's about to get spooky. I know it. Raphael lowered his violin and start, stared at the snapped string. Damn it, again? I thought I just replaced it last month. He suddenly had a sickening nausea right in his stomach, followed by goosebumps crawling on his skin. I have a bad feeling about this. Raphael quickly packed his bag and bolted out of the room. Spooky. And there we go! Whoa, was there always a shady tunnel under this house? Edward took a few steps down the stairs, gawking around in awe. Shay, on the other hand, felt an eerie sensation as cold as air, as cold air brushed her skin, causing shivers to run down her spine. What's the matter with you? Aren't you coming? I'm 
scared. Edward star started to laugh, but soon stopped when he noticed Shelley's genuinely frightened face. His expression softened, walking back up the steps. You'll be fine. I'm right here. Edward smiled, offering his hand. You're right. I guess there's nothing to worry about when you're here. Shelly smiled and reached out for his head. No, don't! It's a trap! Shay hesitated, pulling her hand away. Shelly? I... I can't. I think it's better if we go back, Ed. I've got a bad feeling about this. Shell. <clears throat> Shay shut her eyes, suddenly feeling tremendously terrified. Hands gripped her shoulder. I don't understand. The grip on her shoulder suddenly tightened to a point where his nails stuck into her flesh. Ah! What are you? Oh dang! Stop being a sissy and get down here! Don't you wish to know what happened, human? Ed, what are you doing? Let go of me! Oh, Shelly, you're a fool for trusting me. <laughs> Ed, I don't understand. Do I really need to spell it out for you? Your little Edward is dead! I gobbled him up ten years ago! Big rip. Shelly, get out of the way! Ed! 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 That can't be! And now I'll gobble you up too! Om nom nom. Shelly! Stay where you are. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> Other annoying twin is here. Door suddenly closed by itself, followed by the sound of a lock clicking. What? The door just... <laughs> Shelly! You're coming with me! Edward grabbed Shelly and threw her deep into the tunnel. <laughs> Ooh. Shelly! Shelly! Raphael ran to the closed trapdoor, banging on it desperately. Damn it, it's locked! What's the combination? Continued banging on it, yelling with all his might, tears of anger and regret welling in his eyes. Shelly! <laughs> Angry knocking the day you recorded is screaming. Holy moly. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, that's my fear. If I ever, like, record stuff uh, or why I don't really uh, always feel comfortable recording, um, like doing field recording. Like for example, monster voices and stuff. Uh, because, yeah, I'm afraid of uh, getting angry and knocking. No. I... I actually have to record monster voices uh, pretty soon for a sound design project. So <laughs> let's see how this will turn out. I can't. I can't lose you too! Yeah, I second that. The voice acting is really good. <laughs> Wait, I need... Shelly was thrown to the cold floor, but when she tried to stand up, she found her hands brushing against something dry and scaly like crimson paint. It took her a few moments later to realize that it was dried blood. And it, was, it, and it wasn't just the floor, the entire room, the walls, the ceiling and the stairs were all painted with blood. But whose? No, it can't be. <sighs> Shelly shook her head, refusing to think anymore. It was only then she noticed the awful putrid odor. Her breath hitched when she saw something like a pile of rotten flesh lying at the corner of the room. The unidentifiable glump she saw was undoubtedly a curse. A corpse, the corpse of a ten-year-old boy. Her stomach churned, acid building up in her osophagus. She felt like vomiting. Ed? Did you call me? Sure, not Ed. Just realize that now, did ya? The stranger Shelly called Ed reached his arm out and clutched Shelly's neck. Shelly instinctively shut her eyes as her nails dug into the boy's cold arm. 
but no matter how hard she struggled, the grip on her neck wouldn't loosen, instead it tightened with every second. Shay suddenly saw something slithering under Edward's skin, his flesh bubbled as if scalded, and his veins turned black like coal. This is Ed. This thing was never him. <laughs> Rest assured, Shelly. I will. Once I rip your throat out! What are you going to do with the throat? Tears now started to flow freely from Shelly's eyes. What's this? <laughs> the poor human is crying. How awful. And how tragic it is that you forgot about your own friend's demise. <laughs> It's time for a flashback. Ah! The little girl hugged her friend's arm. Oh, it's you, Shelly. Where'd you go in this weather? You'll catch a cold. Well, I... Who's Ed? Why are your eyes so swollen? Young Ruffer star stared at the girl and pursed his lips, holding back tears. Gone, Shelly. Gone? Where to? Raphael suddenly felt a hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Raphael, he shook his head. The young boy bit his lower lip. Dad? I don't think you can see him for a while. Shelly looked down at her feet despondently. Oh, is that so? But we'll meet again, right? Then we can go on lots of adventures together. You, me, and Dad. Of course. We'll meet again. How can I be so stupid? Ed's dead. Ed is dead. Isn't it like a name for some? Ed is dead. That totally sounds familiar. Is it like a reference to something? There's a song by the Pixies called Ed is dead. And a musician called Ed is dead. <clears throat> Damn it! Ruff kicked the door one last time before he fell on his knees, totally exhausted. Head. Damn it! Damn it! I was careless. How could I let this happen again? I knew you shouldn't be here. I knew you weren't supposed to exist. I just missed you so much. I thought, what if maybe that was really you, even as a ghost? But how could I be so stupid? Raph banged the door one last time, starting to lose all hope. When suddenly he heard the clicks of the door's lock turning. Huh? The lock? It's as if someone is... The combination was solved and the lock opened. I don't know what happened, but... It was Ed's ghost. Shelly! Raphael quickly un unlatched the do uh, trap door and scrambled inside. Shelly! <laughs> oh? How did you get down here? Let go of her! What if I say no? Then I'll have to beat you myself. Ruff lunged at the ghost, grappling him and bringing him down with him. The Ed lookalike was forced to drop Shelly to the floor, finally letting her breathe. <coughs> you sure are feisty for a human. Get out of this place! You don't belong here! <laughs> well, you humans are the stupid ones! I just have to shapeshift into something precious, and then BAM! You fell right into my trap! Can't you just accept the fact that your brother is dead? Shut up, you! <laughs> the monster had stabbed Ruff's chest with his sharp blade-like fingernails. Blood was now pouring out dangerously from Ruff's open wound. 
How'd you like that? Soon, I'll have another court stats in my collection. Tapped in the blink of an eye, the monster's hand was sliced off from his arm and was sent flying to the other end of the wall. It bounced on the wall and fell onto the floor with a sickening splat. Y you... How did you... Raphael was holding a kitchen knife, which was now streaked with black blood. Don't expect... I came here unarmed. <laughs> Just kidding! The malicious spirit kicked the knife out of Raphael's grip, letting it skid across the blood-soaked floor. You humans really think you can outsmart me, huh? The monster wrenched Raphael's arm, twisting it almost to the point of no return. Now you can say goodbye to your precious violin hands! Stop it! Shay charged and stood between the two of them, the kitchen knife clenched in her trembling hands. She pointed to the monster's directions. Direction, her eyes blazing with both fury and fear. Get away from him! But ignoring her, the look alike stepped closer. I said get away! Shelly swung the knife to the monster's direction, but her hands were shaking with trepidation, and she missed her target. <laughs> Your fear gave you away! You're not gonna defeat me with that condition, Shelly! <laughs> Shelly shut her eyes, trying to steady her breathing. But her hands won't stop trembling. It was as if all the nerves in her body failed to listen to her. Her legs faltered, and the pungent smelly of... Smell of decay gagged her nostrils, hardly letting her breathe. She wanted to drop the knife and give up. Don't be scared, Shelly. Oh, that voice. I was hearing things. Your fear gave you away. If you want to defeat him, you shouldn't be scared. Shay suddenly felt a light, almost unnoticeable touch brus brushing her quivering hand, followed by warm fingers intertwining hers. She opened her eyes. But how? Why are you... are you really...? A wave of panic boils from her stomach. Calm down, Shelly. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Shay did just that. The bony grip on her hands tightened. Ted, I'm sorry. Shh. There's no time for that now. Don't worry. I'm right here with you. <laughs> so! to attain a physical form. I'm impressed. But how long would it last? Long enough to defeat you. I'd like to see you try. Here he comes. Shelly! She took a deep breath and steeled her footing. I'm footing. Scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you! Oh, dang. As the monster lunged towards her, Shelly rammed the knife forward, piercing its chest. Go back to where you came from! Black shadow like blood poured out of, out of the monster's core, even from the place where Shelly did not stab. Shay watched as the ground shook and air convulsed. This... This isn't over! What's happening? It's not safe here. Take Wrath and get out! So even like that Edward has the same fashion sense as Ghost Edward. Without wasting any time, Shelly hauled injured Wrath and trudged up the staircase. Shelly, was that... Ed? Is that really him? I have to get to him. Raph made a move to return, but Shelly stopped him. Raph, there's no time. We have to go. You're leaving him? Shelly gazed at his glazed eyes. Tears were now streaming freely down his blood-streaked cheeks. Raph, Ed's dead. And you know that. You know that more than anyone. Little wedge! Must you keep interfering with everything I do? Even with the previous tenants, I failed to eat them because of you! 
Well, what can I say? I can't possibly die in peace when you're killing the two most precious people in my life. But I guess it's over for you now. Your games have ended, Mr. Bunny. <laughs> it was Mr. Bunny all along. <laughs> so you knew. What the heck? There was always something bothering me about Shelly's doll. Now I know you're the spirit that lives inside it. Oh. The reason why Shelly doesn't have friends isn't because she's shy, but because you took her all for yourself. I was lonely. She was the only one who saw me and played with me. And then you guys came in and ruined my time with her. You should know your place. You're dead, and you have no right to interfere with humans' lives. No matter how lonely you are. Do svidania, Mr. Bunny. What's with the like random, <laughs> sudden Russian? But I'll take it. No, no! The basement ceiling started to collapse, quickly piling the room with rubbles. As the room shook, a thick layer of Debris covered the corpse of a ten-year-old child, and soon the, soon the body was not bruh, no longer seen. I don't have much time left. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here, at left it. I guess I'll say my last goodbye before I leave for good. Rap, rap! Open your eyes, please. Shay was busy applying pressure on the open on his open wound, but he had lost too much blood. His face was deathly pale, so pale that Shelly could see blue veins pulsating under his skin. Please, please, I can't lose both of you. Raphael struggled to open his eyes. Uh, Shelly? Raph! Oh, thank God! Ed, where's Ed? Shay glanced at the trap door, which she had just closed, and briefly listened to the sound of the basement collapsing. I don't. I'm right here, brother. You! Trey was about to kick him away, thinking that the monster had escaped, but her hand simply passed through the figure. Edward gave a smile, a small smile. Don't worry, Shelly. It's me. <clears throat> Shelly stared at him, wide-eyed and frozen. A little voice in her heart told her that it was really him. He wasn't a ghost. He was really Ed, they knew. Ed! <laughs> Ed! Raphael stood up suddenly, stumbling to his twin. He moved to hug him, but he could only embrace thin air and soon fell face flat on the ground. Shay ran to him and helped him up. <laughs> My idiot brother. Always so caring to a fault. Ed, I'm sorry about what happened ten years ago. I, I can't believe I... Hey, Shell. What's with your pajamas? <laughs> huh? Don't tell me you still have your terrible fashion sense. Hey! You stole that light from the ghost, didn't you? <laughs> Your lips suddenly curved into a forlorn smile. I'm happy this nightmare ended with me. That way, no one else has to suffer what I and so many others did here. Raph, thank you for taking care of me and Shelly back then. We could have been so much more stupid without you. And I know, I know, most of it was my fault. I'm a bad influence, you know? Don't feel bad that you couldn't save me. Just take care of Shelly. And don't forget to play her that piece if you haven't already, okay? How'd you know about that? <laughs> We're twins, bro. You can't hide anything from me. Peace? What peace? Oh, piece by piece? Name drop? A potential? Well, not quite, but close enough. Ruff looked away, flustered. Edward shifted his gaze to Shelly. And Shelly. He gently touched both of her hands. Although his fingers passed through, the warmth he emanated brought tears to her eyes. Thank you for all the adventures. He stepped back and shot, showed one last smile to them. I love you guys. Next time we see each other, we can have endless adventures together. So spend the blessing of your lives well. Ed! Two watched as Edward still heard, blended with the air around them. And then he was gone. Ed. I'm sorry. Raph! Raph! 
Raphael was unconscious, his blood spilling dangerously across Damn the floor. It, I have to call an ambulance! Please, please stay with me, Raph. song. It's called a peace rap. Songs have lyrics. Exactly. <laughs> She's speaking from my heart. Exactly. Bro, I was on the uh, Persona 4 forums because I had to like research Persona songs. And I changed in the wiki. I removed one of the pieces because it was under the song label but it didn't actually have lyrics. And then it was, that decision was reverted for no reason at all, even though it wasn't a song. Okay, <laughs> that was just my, my rant. Uh, <clears throat> Meh, songs, pieces, same difference. No, no. <laughs> I really like it. <clears throat> I will never forgive Edward. Wow, you do too? This is one of my favorite pieces. This arrangement stars the flute, but I think it'll sound nicer at the violin, don't you think? The... violin? Yeah, you know, that thing you bow. She stood up and started imitating playing a violin, mimicking its voice. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Dude, you look stupid. Are you imitating a violin or a housefly? A, a violin? I feel I slapped Edward's back. Ed, that's rude. Blah, blah, yes, mom. Shelly sat back on the floor, her cheeks completely red. It's okay, Shelly. You can continue. <clears throat> well, now I'm not doing it. Raphael placed his hand on her head, gently ruffling it. Shelly. I'll learn the violin and play the violin arrangement for you. Shelly's eyes brightened. Y you will? Yeah. I'll learn lots and be good enough to play the solo violin in an orchestra. Shelly laughed in excitement. She was ecstatic just imag imagining it. Then you'll come hear me play, won't you? Of course I will! Then it's a promise. That's right. I made a promise, didn't I? How could I forget? The sun shone bright, its warm rays casting golden light onto the house. A sparse set of clouds slowly and gently floated across the sky. Shelley sat on the steps of her porch. Both her parents were out, just like that day, the day Raphael got hurt. He was in the hospital for some time. It was a miracle he was even alive at all. Escaped death so narrowly. What's with the long face? Huh? Shelley looked up. Raph? What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be resting? <laughs> you act like I only got discharged yesterday. I know, but, well, I just care. Uh, yeah, I know. Since you're here... Should he stood up? Would you like to come inside? I made some cookies. Thanks, but not right now. Instead, I would like to give you something. Now, close your eyes. Huh? Why? I've been meaning to give you this for some time, but... Anyway, just close your eyes. Better not be a spider you found in the yard or something. <laughs> I'm not Ed. <laughs> Shelly closed her eyes, even covering them with both her hands for good measure. Raphael took a deep breath, pulling his violin from behind his back. He wasn't allowed to play for months after his injury, so he was out of practice. Even so. This is... She immediately recognized the tune. Her eyes shut open, and she peeked through a crack between her fingers to see Raphael playing. The music his violin produced sounded drastically different from before. The pain and sorrow that used to be entangled with his usual style was absent. It sounded so much more at peace now. It was beautiful. Tears started to well in her eyes. What is this? Why am I... Raphael stopped playing and gazed at Shelly in concern. Shelly? Are you alright? It's just that I can't believe Ed is actually dead. And you've been hiding his death from me for 10 years. I never even noticed. Raphael put his hand on Shelly's shoulder. I'm sorry. Our parents told us to keep a secret from you, to avoid resurfacing your trauma. Hey, 
Yeah. Shay wiped her tears away and slapped her cheeks in an attempt to lift her spirits. Anyway, Raph, I'm really sorry that I forgot all. Anyway. Wait. Our parents told us to keep a secret from you, to avoid resurfacing your trauma. I'm a bit confused. Like, was the Edward that they saw around, like this monster Edward, he... Yeah, I, uh, I rolled back on purpose. <clears throat> um, like, I guess he wasn't officially, like, he didn't... Wait, no. No, yeah, yeah, he didn't, like, have any connection to the parents, this monster Edward. Like, it seemed to me at first, like, I guess, like, Raphael and the monster Edward... Like, the monster Edward still pretended to be, uh, like, around and still be the son of, like, Raphael's parents. But I guess that wasn't the case. He was just hanging around here. <clears throat> I assume. Or, I don't know. Yeah, right. He, sh he only showed up around them. Okay, it all makes sense now. <clears throat> ah right. Don't worry about it. It was ten years ago. Okay. Thanks a lot. It all makes sense now. But you picked up the violin and mastered it because of <laughs> Don't give yourself too much credit. You and your music tapes have inspired me to take up the violin. But it doesn't mean I became a violinist just for you. Well, I prefer if you did. <laughs> Yet you forgot. Huh. Raphael breathed a long sigh. Again, another sigh. I sat on the porch beside Shelley. We all have to move on, huh? Huh? I always thought it was strange, meeting Ed's ghost in your house. I knew it couldn't be real, it can't be him. But deep inside, I thought, what if it was really him? Even as a ghost. I miss him terribly, Shelley. I really do. Ten years ago, if only I was smart enough to call our parents, or I had been quicker to react, then perhaps Ed would be standing here with us right now. Raph, don't say that. Maybe we did make some mistakes in the past, but we have to keep on living. We can't keep on regretting things that happen. If Ed was here, he'd say something like, uh... Y'all should live your life to its best! Don't let my sacrifice go in vain! Or something of that sort. <laughs> That is indeed something he would say. Raphael lifted his chin to the sky, gazing at the white clouds slowly moving along the stratosphere. That really is something he would say. Oh, and we're finishing off with Air by Buck. Give some claps in the chat. That was nice. There's a the credits list. Ah, Nocturne in B flat minor. That's what it was. This is nice. I really love how there was like this uh, camellia. Oh wait, no, okay. I, I thought of the like musician camellia, but it's probably not that camellia. Uh, not the camellia I'm thinking of, the like hard style musician. Um, yeah, I really love how like this, there was this whole thing of like this central piece, this uh, air. Um, air and G. It's really cool. Like how it was used, like solo, violin, piano, solo, piano, piano and violin combo, um, piece with flute arrangement, uh, or like solo flute. And now you're finishing it off with uh, exactly that piece. I think it was awesome. 10 out of 10. So yeah, pretty happy about this. There it goes. <clears throat> 
this was piece by piece. You can check it out over here. On uh, tofu sheets visual.itch.io slash piece by piece. And yeah, um, I really enjoyed this one. It was really nice. Okay, um, let's see. Next up. Uh, let's see, is um, Kurama, are you there? <laughs> if you are, I'm going to play Sad. If not, I'm going to play Diabolos and Musica. Because I believe Diabolos and Musica is longer. Like, Sad is a pretty short game. Yep, I'm not going to play the bad ending because uh, <laughs> this, was already uh, this was already pretty long. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, Fun fact, Diabolos and Musica. This isn't like just some creepy name with like the combination of like devil and music. It actually has a history. Um, Diabolos and Musica was in part um, the name for the tritone. This interval. Um, just like I was saying, uh, something me too far as Diabolos and Musica. Actually, look it up real quick. Um, mi contra fa, diabolos in musica, meaning something like uh, me against fa is the devil in the music. And yeah, they try to avoid, um, like, I guess, the, like in theory, um, like the theorists said, uh, the tritone, you want to avoid that because it sounds, well, pretty problematic. It's difficult to sing. Uh, many of the rules were built around singing. Like this interval isn't that easy to sing. Um, and it was harmonically problematic. Uh, there is a tritone in the dominant seventh chord, though. Uh, so yeah. Um, but other than that, usually people said don't use the <laughs> tritone. But I mean, people still did. Uh, even like um, Bach, I believe, uh, during his like uh, Johann Matthäus Passion. I'm not sure what the English name of that would be. Matthäus Passion. <laughs> um, let's see, English. Matthew, Saint Matthew Passion. There we go. So he had like, I believe uh, he had like tritones in there as well. So yeah, not everyone like followed the rules of like the partly written, partly unwritten rule of not using uh, the Diablos and Musica. By the way, uh, about that saying, one thing I, that was a bit confusing to me personally, um, about the saying is, uh, it says me contra fa, but if you know uh, solfeggio, you would think like me and fa, that's e and f, if you go from the C. Do, re, mi, fa, um, e, f. Uh, but I guess the explanation, which I'm not 100% sure if I understand why, <laughs> that's the explanation. Uh, the me is taken from the hox, hox, uh, hexacordum naturale, which is like, the sixth note from C to A. Do, re, mi. So you get the E from here. And the Mi, uh, and the Fa, I mean, you get from the hexachordum Molle, which is from uh, F to G. So you get the Fa from counting from F and the Mi counting from C. So you get E, B flat. Uh, I guess something like this. But yeah, I don't know. It's a weird thing. Music theory is weird. Just in case you wanted to know. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let me... It's an interlude. Play the only other classical piece that I know of. For your entertainment.
Here we go. Oh, you definitely know this one. Uh, have to kind of. I, I guess it's just gonna stand in the way now. Actually, can I? No, I can't really put it down. Oh well. My shoe escaped. <clears throat> okay, there we go. It was pretty uh, <laughs> quick. Um, <clears throat> anyhow. Fiordisa. Um, one of the reasons why I played this piece, I mean, one of them is that I that's one of the few pieces, like I said, classical pieces that I still like remember how to play. But there's actually someone named Elise in this <clears throat> game. Like she's named Elise, that guy's named Haydn. I assume it's the right one. Um, this one's called Niccolo. Not 100% sure who that is. Um, is that Paganini? <clears throat> that 
There we go. Uh, let me actually Google. I don't think it's Paganini. Probably someone else. No, it's it. It is Paganini. Nicolo Paganini. So there you go. Now you know who these names in this game are derived from. Um, let me open the game. Oh, there it is. Diablos in Musica. Time to adjust the size of the screen again. There we go. Um, yep, you can see the screen. That's a good size. The music is a bit quiet. The tree will just have probably have to live a bit. Does it have like voice acting? The music volume is on a half. I guess we will see. If it doesn't have any voice acting, I'll just uh, put the volume up. Um, it actually has like some music in here. And like I said, I believe uh, Amazing Flow did make sure that as well um, that these like uh, are royalty free. But YouTube will probably still flag me anyways. Oh, uh, what is my name? Time to dox myself. <laughs> Not really. I mean, everyone knows my name pretty much. I don't really hide it. My name is Tim. What is your subjective pronoun? Uh, I guess in smaller case, I assume I am he. Wait. Ah, okay, him. Okay, I'm not that good at like uh, English grammar terms, so <laughs> I was like, wait, what the heck is an objective pronoun? But okay, it makes sense now. Yeah, actually, let me see if I can find that Twitter post. Um, it was the um, devil's, uh, devil something. Um, Give me a second. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, that was, yeah, there we go. That was the tweet uh, and the reason why uh, <laughs> I knew about this. Um, Try to find far for the devil. Um, and to I me, mean, I'm pretty, really happy that they are actually using the Tritone for this because it would be like such a shame to actually be really disappointed if they didn't have anything Triton related in this game called Diabolos in Musica that is a reference to the Triton. Hi Amy, what's up? There's a glamour in belonging, or at least appearing to belong. It exists in unspoken rules, in the soundless communication of a glance, in the understanding of a reference that outsiders miss. I had always been drawn to this ideal, and yet, somehow, I had always lacked it. Yeah, I guess I'm too much of a music nerd not to uh, nerd out about music history and fury and stuff. Trying to fit in, I became a facsimile of different identities. Ooh. Able to fit anywhere, but never quite shaking that lingering sense of alienation. Let me look up facsimile real quick, because I know that it's a like musical term as well. Uh, but I believe it's not a, just only a musical thing. Yeah, it's the reproduction of a of an old uh, document. Um, I've only ever heard the term uh, facsimile personally uh, in connection to like reproductions of old like sh original sheet music like the actual like handwritings and stuff of composers but yeah it's um it makes sense that it's like a term for all kinds of uh, reproductions or yeah that stuff for like old documents
I suppose that feeling is what drew me towards the friends I made that summer and towards the most eventful night of my life. There's Hayden. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's voice acting. Um, here we go. Let me check the volume. Okay, we're good. So which of us would you rather date? <laughs> What's me? What, me? Why are you asking me? I was snapped out of my daydream by Hayden's sudden and awkward question. Leave him alone, Hayden. We're not here to mess around. Oh, come on. This is our last chance to be ordinary high school students. It was the last week of summer, and as the heat gave away to autumn leaves who were preparing to leave home for university. Or at least those around me were. I was already away from home, spending the summer at my aunt's and in the company of the five strangest, most wonderful people I've ever met. Nicola was convinced our meeting had been fate, that my catching of a stray piece of sheet music, blown away by the strong winds on the pier, on the pier <laughs> was more than blind luck. I'm not sure I subscribed to that theory, but I certainly would not have met them otherwise. Nicolo, Haydn, Bartok, Johan and Elise had very little in common with this group of mad rich musical talents. So let me count them up again. Nicolo is Nicolo Paganini, Haydn is Haydn, Josef Haydn, not sure why it's the last name in this case. Uh, Bartok is Bella Bartok, also the last name. Johan is probably Johann Sebastian Bach. That's at least the most well-known well known of the Johans. And Elise, Elise. Not sure if that's a musician. Um, it could be uh, for Elise, a reference to, yeah. I assume. I guess uh, Amy might be able to um, clarify. But yeah, I assume it's Fjordisa, like a reference to the piece Fjordisa by Beethoven, which I actually played at the very beginning. Nay, uh, which I actually played just now. <clears throat> I mean, at the very beginning, I placed, uh, played another piece by Beethoven. It's locked. The rest of us watched as Bartok fiddled with the back door of the arts building. How about I break it down? Dang. Johan is brutal. The rest of us watched the Spartak fiddle with the back door of the arts building. Oh no, okay. I accidentally uh, scrolled backwards. Don't be so stupid, I have the key. How did you get that? I told Mrs. Maxwell I want to use the practice rooms for after hours. She couldn't be bothered to wait for me, so she gave me the key. School lets you do anything you want. It's not fair at all. A good rep goes a long way. Plus, they couldn't possibly risk angering our father. You know how he is. Wait, are Elise and Johan like um, siblings? It was the dead of night uh, and we stuck uh, snuck into the music school. They wanted to perform a concert. I was the sole audience member. I chalked up the strange venue and timing to a sense of summer adventure. After all, this was the last opportunity the group had to do something crazy together to make memories before they went their separate ways. I had to admit, it was exciting. The school was never designed to be seen in this light, and doing so gave it a certain forbidden, liminal quality. It was equal parts thrilling and unnerving. As he walked the corridors, Niccolo began this 1,000th recount of his Paganini story. We'd normally dismiss him, but for once the tale felt appropriate. It's a curse, passed down from generation to generation. Niccolo believed he was descended from Niccolo Paganini, a virtuoso violinist born in the 1700s who was believed to have made a deal with the devil for his talent. Yeah, there were <laughs> these rumors. The rest of the group seemed to tune him out. Haydn would tell me to just ignore him, that everyone knew he was delusional. Why then did none of them ever confront him about it? He was kind of gifted, able to compose the sweetest sonata with nary a moment's thought, yet doomed of failure, insignificance and ennui. That is the fate of all Paganini's descendants. It's only one way to claim the life our talents should afford us. Paganini knew what that was. He paid the price. Yeah, yeah, Nicolo. Come on, Tim. You've still got an hour before the performance. Let's go see if we can get free stuff out of the vendors. It is the last time we'll be here, after all. I have a choice. Uh, okay. I think Nicolo is too edgy. 
and I'm going to hang out with Haydn. Right, so I kick it here and I shake it here and yes, three drinks, winner. He opened a can with a satisfying hiss and passed on to me. Taking a long gulp, he leaned against the vending machine, shuffling closer to me. He looked out into the distance wistfully. This was a good summer. I'm going to miss these days. What was your favorite memory of the summer? I actually was at the museum once. It kind of sucked. It was pretty boring. I actually was... Um, we had a... We went to Vienna, actually, with our school class and stayed there for a week. And we went to, like, different houses of composers. It was the most boring thing ever. Like... Why would one care that... I don't know, Mozart used this table and chair. I mean, it's okay to care, obviously. I don't judge. It's just not interesting for me personally. Um, I don't know. I guess they were all good. Nothing really stands out. Nothing stands out. Not even the theme park. <laughs> Jeez, Tim, sorry. You had such a bad time with us. That was what I meant, dude. Didn't mean it like that, Hayden. I had a really nice time with you, all honest. What was your favorite memory? The theme park, riding adversary with you. I kinda hoped that was your favorite memory too. Sorry, Hayden. But never mind. Haha. <laughs> it's getting awkward. Well, 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 this looks cozy, Hayden. You were interrupted by Nicola walking into the room, shooting a glare at Hayden. Hayden looked right back at him, staring him down. I felt as if I was missing something. Was Nicola just nervous about his concert? Was more going on between Hayden and Nicola that I than I realized? Time to set up. Come on. We awkwardly followed him out of the room, tension in the air. When we were all together again, Nicolo started dishing out tasks for setting up. Elise sorted out the music. Right away. Haydn, you go get the stance. Uh. Johan and Bartok, you go put the chairs out. <laughs> How many chairs do you need? It's like, we are like six people. And only one person who's watching. Tim, just take a seat. It's your show, after all. Yeah, it's your show, all right. Haydn walked off towards the storage rooms, shooting us a glare as he went. What had gotten into him? Once we were all alone, Nicolo offered me his arm. This way, esteemed guest. Oh well, from anyone else, this would have been seemed awkward, cringe-inducing. <laughs> yeah, exactly my fault, but he made me feel like a, the guest of honor. I slipped my arm through his and let him lead me towards the music rooms, listening to the rain bounce off the school roof. Thank you for being my audience tonight. It means more to me than you could ever know. I'm excited to hear what you've written. Why are you showing me in now, though, in the middle of the night? Is this for the drama factor or what? Oh, the chairs for ghosts, right. The drama is certainly a part of it. This piece can only be played at night. It can only be enjoyed by a very special audience member. And this is it. As we arrived at the music room, Nicolo let go of my arm and held the door open for me. After you. I slid a palm onto the small... Uh, I stood a palm onto the small of my back and nudged me through the door. Okay. Take a seat. I sat down as he launched against the piano, looking at me strangely, intently. I felt small and conspicuous under that gaze. I can't believe this moment is finally here. The masterpiece come to fruition. It is within my grasp. And it's all thanks to you, Tim. Is he like... Gonna, going to summon like the devil? Thanks to me? Yes, if you weren't there uh, here, I wouldn't have written it at all. Haydn's insistence on cramming every possible summer activity into the last six weeks. It was a new experience for me. He sighed, getting up from the piano and walking towards me. Prior to the last six weeks, I had never been to a theme park or a punk concert or stayed up all night like that. I had been so focused on achieving musical goals that I'd never had the chance to be normal. He knelt down so we were eye to eye. He showed me what that was like. It meant a lot. Thank you. Honestly, everything we did that summer was Haydn's idea, but Nicolo was opening up for the first time, it seemed wrong to argue. I will remember this summer forever. As he said that, he took both of my hands in his. Nicolo had normally been so distant, reserved. I thought he looked down on me because I didn't share their talent or live in their foreign musical world. He does seem shady, but perhaps his disdain had merely been a front for deeper feelings and it, I'd completely misinterpreted it. Um, I'm I'm not floating on that side of the river. Sorry, Nicolo. Made to get away, tell him he had the wrong idea, but what was stopped in my tracks by a clunk and a feeling of cold metal around my wrist. 
Excuse me. I was handcuffed to the chair. <clears throat> I was handcuffed to the chair. <laughs> Bruh. I struggled, bashing my hands against the chair and chafing my wrists on the cuffs. Let me go. Ha ha ha. What did you think this was? Me trying to get you alone because I like you? Oh, Tim, I'm not hiding. I'm trying to save you because he loves you. Idiot. I guess I have to reject Hayden as well. Oh well. Thinks he can ruin this for me. I feel like this might be... Actually, this is like a pretty interesting thing because... Um, the experience of someone who... Like in this case, isn't into dudes. Like in my case, is totally different. Uh, will be totally different from people who will be playing this far into dudes. Because they might be more inclined to, you know, accept Nicholas and or Hayden's feelings. I, well, don't really. I mean, I could roleplay it, but I'm going to play it as if I was actually Tim in this scenario. You're going to sit right there and you're going to listen. What is going on? Was this some kind of joke? And Hayden lost me? Ha. He's going to be angry when he sees you like this. I mean, I appreciate it. If someone likes you, then that at least means that there's something like good about you. So I'd be happy either way, even if I did have to reject him. No mind though, it, would, it will be far too late by then. The Herald will play when he is called upon, whether he likes it or not. It's disgusting, the way he tried to eschew his birthright. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, I shouldn't complain though, he could have had it all and yet here I am. It is me who will have the honor of receiving the devil tonight. The devil? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the piece, to the Amy piece. Let me go, rattle at the cuffs again, to no avail. Why had he done this? More importantly, what was he planning to do next? This isn't funny, Niccolo, seriously. Let me go. I assure you, Tim, I don't think it's funny either. I suppose while we're waiting, I might as well tell you what's going on. I was going to happen tonight. I am going to summon the devil, and he is going to give me fame and riches beyond my wildest dreams. I knew it. You, unfortunately, will not survive the performance. They say that to bargain with the devil, one must sell one's soul. By which they ma mean one must commit an er egregious sin. Bruh, he knows all the difficult words that I've never heard of. What could possibly be more effective than murder? Uh, murder? <laughs> What's he planning to... The piece you will hear tonight has two purposes. One, to kill the listener, and two, to summon the devil. I must confess, it was not I who composed it. It is Paganini's, the caprice he played for Satan. Satan was passed down for generations, waiting for, for one with enough courage to play it again. Despite their clearly devotion, clear devotion to our organization, my family were still too cowardly to play it. Despite his birthright, Haydn had ne very nearly left us so many times. As so often the story goes, it fell to the poor adopted son to take action. Okay, I will make sure to kick him. So here I am. So he was telling me that he was Hayden's adopted brother and their family was deep into some kind of devil worship. Why was I only hearing this now? And where were the others? I needed them to save me desperately. Das <laughs> Yeah. I thought like Nicolo, okay, maybe he was just edgy, a bit awkward. But cool deep inside, but nope. Lee Spartak, Johan. Hayden, Hayden, please. I started to sob. Nicola was serious. He wasn't going to let me go. And he really believed in this devil's thing. Was I going to die? Please let me go. This isn't real. It couldn't possibly be. You don't really think you could kill me, do you? Take another human life? Help, it's no use, Tim. They know why we are here. They're not going to save you. Hyde might argue, but he'll be a good dog and do what he's told. And on the topic of murder, I prefer to think of it as rubbish disposal. Bruh. That's not nice. He was completely insane. My only hope was that the others did not truly share in his madness. As I heard them shuffle in, it was time to find out. The musicians took up their places, ele elegantly moving on to the stage. Johan looking furtive. Bartok wearing a goofy grin that betrayed nervousness. Elise, proud as ever. And Niccolo, the summoner himself, talking, taking the solo position at the front of the stage. 
Only Hayden was missing. He stormed onto the stage a moment behind everyone else. I was looking sullen, his face darkened further when he saw me. Nicola wised him tied up. Well, so he doesn't leave, of course. Cor Corsor? I thought you said he came willingly. I mean, he came here of his own... Of. I think I messed up with the uh, um, pronoun that they put in. He came here of uh, his own accord. He didn't know. He... Uh, what you were planning. You're so highly strong about these things. What happened to Mr. Ordinary Teenager? An ordinary teenager doesn't handcuff their friends to a chair. You... He stopped mid-sentence and grabbed his forearm, face contorted in pain. Uh-uh, Hayden. You're the herald now. Ah, okay, it was more for for Lisa. Okay, got it. I mean, um, women's composer studies is a bit of a more recent thing. I mean, personally, I would have suggested Clara. For Clara Schumann, maybe if that would have fit, I don't know. I mean, Clara Schumann is the like one of the more uh, prominent uh, female composers that people know of. But yeah, other than that, there's definitely more research to be done in that uh, regard. You're the herald now. It's not my fault you threw away your chance to be me. No, Hayden pulled up his sleeve to reveal a glowing brand posing with light. It is time. Haydn picked up his trumpet and tears in his eyes raised it to his lips. Before I began playing, he managed to choke out an apology. Tim, I'm sorry. Ah, there it is. <laughs> That's you, Amy, isn't it? A fanfare blasted out. I knew nothing about music, but something was wrong, unnatural, something about it. Soon enough, the others came in, playing a melancholy discord that hardly seemed suitable for a human ear. I mean, that's just contemporary classical music for you. No wonder this piece had devilish connotations. Turn it up on my end a bit. It's a bit quiet. Okay, I'll turn it up on the stream's end as well. Okay. As cacophony continued, I contorted, tryingly, contorted, trying desperately to slip out of my prison. It was no use. I was getting used. Uh, I wasn't getting out of the cuffs. What had Niccolo meant by that whole thing with murder and selling his soul? Did he believe this noise was going to kill me? What would he do when it didn't? Would he let me go? I prayed it was the case and tried not to think of the alternative. As I sat there, listening to the strange sounds, the air began to chill. I started to hear whispers of something under the music. What was that? Spooky. I strained to listen and found I couldn't move my limbs. They were completely paralyzed. What was happening? My chest tightened and my heart beat rapidly. Uh, I panicked, grasping at my memories of the evening. What had they given me? Unless everything Nicola had said about the piece was true. My thoughts became less coherent as time passed, my vision blurring. Eventually I was nothing but the music. Nothing but a tritonal discordant drone. Nice. <laughs> Oops. Triton reference. Like I said, I would have been uh, pretty disappointed if it didn't have any like Triton references, but it was even used as like a, an adjective here, tritonal. Really love this. Nothing at all. Is it actually a triton drawn? It could be. In my last, last moment of clarity, I heard a strange voice ring out. A worthy sacrifice. I accept your offer. Excuse me? It's local prodigy on war tour. School suicide. Interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, I 
Okay, let's hang with Niccolo this time. Let's go the Niccolo route, maybe. No, actually, let's go the Haydn route. Maybe this would be different. So I like the theme park, I guess. The theme park, it was great. Riddling the adversary and the vortex was awesome. Uh, riding, rather. Oh man, you're such a speed demon, Tim. Like the rest, I think seeing Niccolo turn green refused to go on anything was the highlight of my day. Oh yeah, to reiterate on the ending, I assume uh, what happened was that you, like your death, was covered as a suicide and Niccolo went on a world tour because he has actually sacrificed my soul to the devil. Such a dick, <laughs> I guess. <clears throat> Bet you're glad you had me to go on the rides with you. Yeah, I am. It was good to have someone keep me company, even though I screamed the whole way. Even then, it's been nice spending the summer with you. You too, Tim. You know, I felt really left out of the group until you came along. Nicola and Elise are always together, practicing, researching, being overly serious. And Johan and Bartok, well, they're fun, but they're not folks to tell your secrets to, if you know what I mean. But you, you're just... Hayden paused and looked at me as if searching for the right words to say. Tim, I have something to tell you. You need to... Oh, there's Nicola again. I need some help with the stance, Tim. Come with me. You can't ask a guest to help with setup, Hayden. Hayden, that's rude. Ask me to do this by myself is rude. Come on, Tim. Yes, Hayden. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> Please. I don't want Hayden to have to do all that by himself. I hope so. I hope I won't die this time. Don't worry, Niccolo. I'll be back in time for the show. You had better be. As I walked past him to follow Hayden, Niccolo leaned over and whispered in my ear. Don't listen to anything he says, Tim. This probably was a bit ear rapey. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hayden slung a protective armor on my shoulders and steered me towards the storage rooms. He walked the deserted corridors of the school, listening to the pitter-patter of rain bolting up outside. Sorry for getting angry earlier. I'm gonna miss having you around when you're gone. It's been nice to hang around with someone who isn't a pretentious string player, am I right? <laughs> Is that a thing? Are string players like pretentious? I mean, I know string players who are pretty cool, but uh, out of like second-hand uh, telltale things. Um, is that a hiding piece? Could be. Anyhow, um, the like, at least here, the high school uh, music scene is pretty competitive. You could be lucky and be in a class of people who are like pretty chill, but there are like things where like people are made to cry and stuff and are put down and it's way too competitive. I think I'm kind of glad that I'm not on in a like Hochschule, but at a university studying musicology because people here are really chill. Like there's no like high competitive, like no toxic competitiveness. At high schools, uh, Hochschulen, not high schools. It's like an alternative to university. Here in Germany, uh, things are can be more toxic and competitive if you're unlucky can always come back next summer. He shot me an odd look and then his face fell. I'm not so sure about that one. Hayden let go of me and strode ahead, walking the rest of the way in silence. When we found the storage room, Hayden slid open the door and ushered me inside. As soon as the door closed, his cheerful demeanor shifted. He looked at me and narrowed his eyes. I'm gonna ask you a blunt question, Tim. Okay. Why? Why on earth would you agree to this? To what? Watching the performance? Yes, the performance. You're risking your... Wait. You don't know what's happening tonight, right? Nicholas going to play his newest composition. Yes, but of course he didn't tell you. Nuclear doesn't care about anyone but himself. Tim, didn't you wonder why you were the only audience member? Why you were sneaking to the conservatoire in the dead of the night? Guess I just thought he was shy. Hayden crossed the room, grabbing my hands in his. He looked me dead in the eye. Nicholas' intention with his piece is to summon the devil. Wait, this needs more weight. Um... Nicholas' intention with this piece is to summon the devil. The audience member is an offering. If all goes to plan, you'll be killed or possessed or dragged to hell. I thought you'd agreed knowingly. But I have knowingly agreed to that. You don't seriously believe that's what's going on, do you? Wholeheartedly, Nicholas is going to summon the devil tonight. If you think that, why are you here? Why are you helping? He looked at his feet inside, before pulling up his sleeve to reveal a scar, strangely shaped and glowing. 
The design was intric intricate. There is no doubt it had been put there deliberately. Runs in the family, no choice, my friend. It was fun pretending to be a normal kid for a while. I did try, you know. Every time they put a violin in my hands, I'd fuck it up somehow. I thought the trumpet was safe. Turns out the devil was an angel once. He too needs a herald. I went far for hell, the first trumpet of revelations. Tim, this is my destiny. I can't escape it. But you can. Run, please. There's a fire down. Door down the hall. I'll tell them you overpowered me. Let's go. Okay, I'll go. I'm not staying, I believe you, but... If Nicol really believes he's summoning the devil on board about what he might do. Hayden, you got this. <laughs> you you got my back. Uh, stay safe, Hayden. I'll see you around. I went to leave, but turned around. I thought and said, this might be your destiny, but you're a good person. Helping me escape shows that. Sheepishly smiled at me and adverted his eyes. Just go. With some trepidation, I left the room and crept towards the fire door, expecting one of the others to appear at any moment. Floorboards creaked with each step, but a thrum of rain and wood must have muffled the sound. I made it to the end of the hall and spotted the fire door. Praying it wouldn't set off an alarm, I pushed it open. Without a sound, the heavy door swung wide, facilitating my escape. A sigh and one look back over my shoulder, I ventured out into the rainy night. As I walked back to my aunt's, I couldn't help but worry. What was going on at the school? Was Hayden in danger? Was Hayden the danger? Who had I made friends with? I shook the question out of my mind as I reached the house. The worst I was getting out of this evening was her grinning about where I'd been. I could have been so much worse. It wasn't until the next morning that I got my answer. Five teenagers dead and said any ritual. Hayden, I failed you. I'm sorry. Still no good ending. Okay. Um, let's... you know what? Do we stay? Do we go? I guess we go and then we leave with him. Come with me, please, Hayden. I know we haven't talked, known each other for long, but I care about you. Whatever's going on here, you don't need to be involved. Hayden gave me a sad smile. Tim, I already told you, this is my destiny. If not tonight, tomorrow, the next day. If the Nicola is some other fool who wants power and glory, I can't escape this mark, I can't escape where I am and where I come from. But you're Hayden, the happy lucky trumpet player, the only one of this bunch with a sense of humor, the sweetest person I know. What is all this demon nonsense? Hayden sighed and took my hands again. If I tell you, will you please go? Okay. You know how Niccolo likes to claim he's descended from Paganini and tells the devil's, the devil's story all the time? Well, the story's true. But Paganini is Niccolo's ancestor. He's mine. And of course, the other lie, Niccolo didn't write the piece. It's been handed down generation through generation, waiting to be played. Now that someone's willing to do it, my family are pushing for his concert to happen. I can't stall any longer. The problem is your family? Then run away, stay with me. I'm sure my aunt will take you in when we tell her your family is some sort of musical cult. <laughs> they do that for me. Tim, I'd be putting your aunt and you in grave danger. You don't know what my family are capable of. It's like I haven't considered running before. It didn't end well. I started off in this pace as recalling a painful memory. Please, just go. No. Hide my aunt's ex-army. She can take a couple of violent players. Come with me. Tim, there are not a couple of violent players there. I don't care who they are. You deserve better than to be punished, pushed into some dangerous ritual. You deserve to be better than a family who cares more about some absurd demonic legend than your well-being. My own for that matter. Reach my hand out towards him. Please. With some trepidation, he places in mine. You're doing the right thing. Thank you for coming with me. I'm so worried that we can worry about the precautions when we're out of here. Some trepidations. We left the room and walked towards the fire door, still hand in hand. I was expecting one of the other two to appear at any moment. Flobart creaked with each step, but the form of rain and wood must have muffled the sound. I made it to the end of the hall and Hayden guided me towards the fire door. This is it. He looked back over his shoulder, then towards me. It seemed as he was going to say something, but he sighed and pushed the door open. The heavy door swung wide, thankfully with no alarm facilitating our escape. Hayden strode through the door into the rainy night. Drenched, he turned to, into, turned to me. Come on, Tim. Let's go home. I walked back to my aunt's. I couldn't help but worry. What was going on? It's cool. We're just still playing the concert. The Titan family be coming after us. I went to speak, but when I saw his face, none of that mattered. The only important thing was that we are safe now. Free from whatever menace Nicola had planned. Ooh, that's nice. If anything, the morning after seemed ar too ordinary. 
The front page of the newspaper was about some housing row. There were no reports of break-ins at the school or strange creatures, and no one came to the house looking for Hayden. We're safe. For now. And that's that. I'll leave it at that. There are a few more routes, like kissing um, him and stuff. But I think that's good. For now. We did it. We played the two musical visual novels. We still have one more to go. Um, ah, Clara's name you considered, but it didn't feel, uh, fit a character too well. Yeah, true. And the thing is, there like isn't enough choice. So, yeah, I think Elise was a safe. Elise was a safe bet, especially since it's like uh, a name that people know of. Okay. That's actually exactly like 2 hours and 30 minutes. I could actually like submit this to the uh, streaming um, thingy. I think I, I think I will do that. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess this would be like the, around the cut for the Spooktober streaming um, submission of two and a half hours. But it's not over yet. We have one really short uh, game called Sad. S-A-D, rather, by um, Kurama. I think Kurama fell asleep, <laughs> probably. Uh, they did say that it was pretty late. Um, and Alfred, this is actually something you might enjoy because it kind of goes into a similar direction like as your own game. Um, yeah, I guess here. Uh, again, here, Diabolus and Musica. Um, if you want to check it out, play the other routes, here you go. It's really cool. I really enjoyed it, especially like the, all the musical references. I think it was really nice. But yeah, before we, are, we will play set, time for another short interlude. A really short one, though. Um, like I said, I don't really have any more classical pieces. But there's one piece uh, called... The Secret, which is from the movie The Secret, um, by, what's his name? Is it Jai Cho? Maybe it is. Um, the Secret. Uh, it's a Korean movie. Um, ah, that was you, the, uh, the, the playing. Um, the trumpet. Okay, yeah, secret. It's just called secret. Um, and there is, it's partly about like, kind of, classical music. I mean, it's more like Chopin focused, but uh, one of the pieces, like the first part of the piece. I'm not going to play the whole piece because it's a bit too, virtuosic for me. But the first part part does sound like, very classical music, uh, similar. It's really short though, so. Don't expect too much. <clears throat> I messed up. Mini interlude. I made a few mistakes, but I can recommend checking it out, um, the full piece, because it like gets really action heavy later on. It's like, um, like
something like this. Um, let me actually pull up the uh, thing so you can find it. Uh, secret, oops, secret Jai Cho. Um, piano. Yeah, that's the time travel theme. I used to play uh, kind of somehow, but I haven't played it in like years. So I don't really want to attempt <laughs> to play it in full. But yeah, I can recommend. Okay, we are going to play sad now. Time to feel sad. Maybe. This one's actually done with the Tyranno Builder, I believe. Yeah, I think it's made with the Tyranno Builder, so it's, it isn't a run by game this time. But still has interesting gimmicks. Yeah, Tyranno. Let's see. I can't find the window. What the heck? Do I have to use like window? Uh, like I can't use window capture here capture it for some reason it doesn't can't like find it somehow um, let me try game capture yep game capture seems to work no I guess not does it no it doesn't yeah, I probably have to use uh, monitor capture. Um, screen. It's a bit less immersive that way. I mean, I can just do this. Okay. I think that's good enough. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this game may potentially trigger seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is advised. Where am I? Oops. I'm feeling weird. What is my name again? I remember now. My name is... The chat box is actually overlaying the game, so I will shut, uh, like... Uh, make it invisible for this game. Tim. That is my name. Oh, the... Just realized it's the name of the dev. <laughs> Isn't it? Oops, uh, pressed the wrong button. I will rewind in a second. Is that their name? Kurama, yeah, that's their name. Um, my bedroom. So it was just a nightmare. I got scared for, scared for nothing. Ah, wait, it's Friday. I have school. Classes flew by today. I'm pretty excited to finally get out of here, but I can't seem to shake the strange feeling of deja vu. I refocus for a minute to notice a girl that is running straight at me. Hey Tim, how are you? It's been so long. I didn't see you. I miss you. Who is this girl and why is she so cheery towards me? 
Ah, I missed you too. Uh, oh no, what's her name? Do you remember me? We were in the same drawing contest last month and you gave me your phone number. <laughs> Don't give many people your phone number. Um, sure, I remember you. I do remember. No, me? Drawing? Tanoshi, what are you doing? Is that your boyfriend? What? No. He's a friend of mine. We met each other one year ago at the drawing contest. I think you like him. He loves anime too. I do indeed. Uh, there's no way I can like someone else than myself. That girl, in the other hand, uh, seemed pretty self-centered and arrogant. Uh, what am I even doing here? I should be home by now. Akama, do you know where Shiro is? Nope. What am I supposed to do? This class is ending at 1pm today. We're gonna go search for her. I'm 99% sure that she's at the beach like always. Let's go, Akame and Tim. What? And so I was dragged to the beach by Tanoshi, Akame and Tao. In Tao. The girl looked at this guy without saying anything. Is that Shiro? <clears throat> Shiro. Oh. Hi, Tanoshi, Akame and... Who's that? <clears throat> That's my friend Tim. Don't worry, he's a nice guy. Am I? Tim, this is Shiro. Her and Akame are my best friends. Uh, nice to meet you, Tim. Did you see that? <laughs> Looking at the logs? <clears throat> Tim, I wanted to tell you something, but I was scared to do it alone. Where you go? I'm sorry, I have to go home now. Glad you found your friend. Goodbye, Tino. Tani. <laughs> Tanoshi. Oh, okay, I understand. See you later. That was awkward. After we said our goodbyes, I ran away as fast as I could. I was too embarrassed. What a strange morning. Finally coming back home. I took out my phone and scrolled through social media until I arrived home. I don't understand. What happened when I met this Shiro? I don't know why, but I got chills all over my body. And what was up with this weird girl bringing me a complete stranger friend to the beach? Even if she said she knew me, I never met her. Did that come here? She seemed preoccupied by something. Whatever, I don't care. It's not my business anyway. The next day I had morning school and October holidays were fast approaching. At school, Tanoshi, who I first met yesterday, was looking at me from a distance. Reluctantly, I forced myself to go talk to her. Hey, Tanoshi, um, I saw you looking at me from the back of the classroom. Do you want to tell me something? Do you remember my name? Haha. <laughs> Tim. Will you? Will you go out with me? No. I don't want to hurt you, but I'm sorry, you just don't know each other that well. Then she paused for a moment and hung her head. A tense silence had settled in the room. The two of you neither moved nor spoke when suddenly she turned on her heel without accepting your refusal and ran off. Later that day. Oh, it's my phone. Wait, I need like, um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's moving a bit quickly. Uh, Do not ask me who I am. Let's meet tomorrow at one p.m. at the be at the restaurant. Okay, <laughs> is this a prank of some sort? There's no way I'm going there. I'm gonna jump on my bed and stop thinking about it. Next morning. Crap, I was left. It's already 11 a.m. This reminds me. The message I received yesterday. What if it was important? What if that person needed me? What should I do? It's actually pretty interesting. What should I do? No escape. It's 12.50 p.m. and I'm the only one here. Why am I the only client? Behind me? Ah, uh, why did you have to scare me? Listen to him. Please, I have to tell you the truth. It's me. He... 
Hikari. You, you don't remember me, do you? From the first moment I saw you when Tanoshi introduced you. I remembered everything. All the moments we spent together in the real world. Tim, we are the only real people here. What do you mean? No, she is not real. And Shiro. Shiro is the one who... Tim, you're the one that can save us. I want to get back into the real world. She's having fun torturing us. Can't take it anymore. Is someone talking about me? How nice of you, but why are you crying, Hikari? Come with me, Tim. I want to tell you some important things. I'm the leader here. What does that mean? It closed. Oh, you decided to come back? Listen. <laughs> Standing speed dating indeed. Don't try to arrest me. You will regret it. I'm not a police man. I won't arrest you. I can't. I'm gonna let you play now. See you later. What happened? I feel dizzy. Hikari slowly closed her eyes without saying anything. After three or four hours, she finally awoke. Does somebody hear me? Is there anybody here? Dang, she got flushed down the toilet. Just kidding, I won't let you play anymore. Hikari is gone. Tanoshi never existed. You are the one who destroyed this dimension. I mean, it was you, pretty much. I didn't do anything. Don't blame me. You killed them all. You did. What are you talking about? I'm innocent. You're not leaving? Okay, we'll wait some more time then. <laughs> no? Oh. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> this is too close. You want to play this game, player? I could stay here all day, but you, you couldn't stay here more than one minute behind your little computer uh, screen watching my beautiful self. What? Not my... <laughs> Let's see how long you can last. Cat Shiro. I can play along. Oh, it's actually delayed, <laughs> so I probably shouldn't. <clears throat> nice, okay. She was to get all along, I knew it. <clears throat> so the thing is, you will see in a second. Um, here we go. Wait, did I already scroll past? Oh no, there we go. Oh, and there's me. That's me. For me, Zictus, that's me. But yeah, um. Fox reference.
<laughs> oh, there we go. That's Shiro. The end. Not from Kurama to reset the game, delete the set, Tarano auto save stuff. Dot stuff. Find the games folder. Yeah, it was their very first uh, VN, and they aren't a um, English uh, native speaker. I actually don't think they had a proofreader, so. Uh, but I did um, help with giving tips on how to like construct the story. While I am not a professional writer or anything, I guess I do because of like um, classes. I have to know a few things about like constructing an effectful like short story stuff like that so i think they did a really cool thing um especially for like their first thing and like i said it's kind of similar to alfred pro's thing that we'll be playing in a second um i thought about maybe playing those two but uh it's like too much <laughs> um so alfred pro's just recently released Usagi Syndrome 2.0. I have played 1.0 already, but 2.0 added, I believe, quite a few things. And there's me as well. Tim Leichert, that's me. And here, I'm also a tester. Or at least like similar in the sense that it's like fourth wall breaking to some degree. Okay, Kokoro, thanks for being here. I streamed for almost three hours, holy moly. That's probably one of the longest streams I've ever done. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Like I said, make sure to check out Piece by Piece, Diablos and Musica, and SAD if you like them and want to play the other routes. <laughs> and yeah, the piano interludes. I guess that's the uh, advantage of being a musician uh, when you're playing like games about music. Being able to give like context in that way or like those small interludes and stuff. All right, see you all, Kokoro. Um, okay, so Saga Syndrome wasn't um, submitted to the Spooktober Vision Novel Game Jam, just like something uh, totally different. 2.0, there it is. Um, actually, since you're saying that the interludes were pretty good, how about I play another one? Not an actual piece this time, just a, like a short improvisation. After, no, actually, let's take a short break and after that I will play an interlude. So, I will see you in a minute.
Oh, dang. I didn't mute the mic. Guess I missed the button. Um, here we are again. That should be good for a small interlude. Phew. Time to strip now. <clears throat> okay. Oxagi Syndrome by Alfred Prose. I said I'm actually here. I've arranged a piece uh, from the original Edisus syndrome for this, like a spooky version, but you will see it. Uh, resets. How how do I do that? How does one reset the game? 
Because this is like the 2.0 version, right? Like freshly re-downloaded it, so there isn't really any cage or saves or stuff like that. Is there? Actually, there's a safe here. Okay, Alfred, I need a guide on how to... Ah, an app data. Ah, uh, oh god. Guess time to find app data. All the while, you will hear this nice Iriso Syndrome music. Is it like a shortcut to get to app data? I forgot. I actually don't have RenPy here. I have local and roaming inside app data. As you can see here, I'm inside app data. See RenPy, Usagi syndrome. Okay, I have Usagi syndrome and roaming. Yeah, okay. So the whole Saga Syndrome folder, I assume, right? Um, guess and that's that. I guess my PC can't handle streaming anymore. Uh, it's actually still correct. I do I have to delete anything else? Is there maybe anything like? because of the persistence maybe that there's a persistent and safe here this one oh no that one is on purpose there right <laughs> I'm going to ignore it for now though So, should I delete the persistent? Yeah, okay. Deleting persistent. She probably should have uh, closed the game before doing that. Okay, let's try this again. Nope. Still start with a question mark. Um, so I just saw that I was mentioned by um, by Amazi the developer of Diablos and Musica uh, in the like Discord saying uh, the stream was really late, Ch check it out if you haven't already seen it and someone else uh, commenting yeah very chill and enjoyable and <laughs> now people might be coming in here being like oh nice and chill and enjoyable stream I will watch that yet here we are my vampire folder I guess I could do that I actually don't even know what my Rampai folder is. Um, I 
think I found it. Yep, there it is. Okay, now deep persistent. Launching the project failed. Please ensure that your project launches normally before running this comment. Oh boy. What have you done? Let's see, what does it say? If you try to launch it. Nothing. Oh, there it is. It opens up Atom for some reason. Could it load from archive bonus dot airpy uh, Very mysterious. Very mysterious. So I think what the best course of action would be I end the stream because it's already like three hours long. And Alfred and I work on this, and then I stream it next week. I think that would be best. That way I can take a break. One day I'll play this game as well. This looks really cool, like stylistically. One day. Oh well. <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, I guess I would end it here. And yeah, maybe I'll see you next week. We'll be playing a spooky use syndrome um, inspired fan game by Alfred Pros. If I get it to work, I hope I do. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm also awkward about like uh, ending streams. I have no idea what to say. Let me speak to you with music. Bye.